Gentlemen, please stand up. Yes. What's next after Evil Dead for you? What's next after Evil Dead? I go back to Burn Notice Season 7. <laughs> Enough for God's sake, people die in seven years. People that that's longer than most marriages. Is there gonna be I'll a be back to you later. What's that? Will there be a what? A sequel to the Evil Dead remake? Depends on how many times you see the remake. So those remake, sequel, remake, sequel, reimagining, rebirth, rebirth, well, we do Sam Raimi bringing Ash back. Sam Raimi bringing Ash back. He's he, he, Sam Raimi is threatening to write Army of Darkness 2 this summer. I'll believe that when I see it. He says that every five months. Thank you! Do I go to your house and just shout random things out? You ran the tree don't fork! I can't help that! Question here. Uh, uh, this side. <laughs> I knew it was a mistake going back there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it has nothing to do with movies. Do with movies. Go green or go blue? Go green or go blue? What the hell does any of that mean? <laughs> Spartans or Wolverines? Spartans or Wolverines? I haven't lived in Michigan in 48 years. What do I give a shit? <laughs> State, so there's a little green. My brother went to Michigan State. There's a little more green for you. My grandfather went to U of M. My brother went to U of M. So I guess it's a tie because I didn't go to either one of those damn schools. <laughs> I dropped out after six months. <sighs> I didn't miss shit. I gotta tell you, I didn't miss anything. Oh, I need a degree to be an actor. Are you kidding me? <laughs> be covered in blood? I can do that with a Fourth grade education. <laughs> you people here know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I like my yeah. I grow weary with this side. Let me see you're here. Yes, ma'am, right here. Please stand up to share your question. Was it like working around some of the explosions on burn notice? The problem is sometimes they don't work around us. They come right at you. They don't really know. Uh, it's loud as hell and dangerous. <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> uh, yes, right here. Uh, are you ever thinking about doing one of your own conventions? Thinking about doing one of my own conventions. Stable <laughs> you know. You get working on that right away. <laughs> and let's talk. Let's, let's go. Uh, somewhere in the back. Yeah. Yes. The Expendables. You wow, not even close. No, no. <laughs> the Expendables you what? I heard that you wanted to do like a you the heard, Expendables you heard. horror film. I want to do a horror film. The With Expendables the, of Horror. Exactly. Yes. I would love to see that. Or I would love to make that. <laughs> There's a guy over here who needs $2 million. <laughs> Experiences. That's a very dangerous question, man. <laughs> because an acting experience that's fun means the movie is hard to watch. <laughs> I mean, Darkness was not very fun at all. It's kind of fun to watch, though. <laughs> not fun to make. What about my least favorite? My least favorite? Probably Army of Darkness. <laughs> What was your least favorite to watch? Let's play a game or a game. Stand back up. Stand back up. Ma'am, you promised you put some money out for the various classics that I've done. What have I done that you would like your money back for? And now don't chime in for God's sake. There's a lot of people who go, oh, I know. Shut up and let her answer.
Let this be her. And shut up, Papa Hotem. Up your butt. <laughs> Right, you love Frisco County Jr. We're not talking about what we love now. <laughs> Find the money back for the all the evil that <laughs> Why are you here if you're clapping? <laughs>
<laughs> you believe that? I got some swampland in Tennessee. Yes, yes, back there. Do you prefer uh, skinny Elvis or fat Elvis? Skinny Elvis or fat Elvis? Why would that impact your life one way or the other? <laughs> you brought it up. Do you like skinny Elvis? <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. <laughs> That's good enough yeah. for me. <laughs> The alternative is fat Elvis. <laughs> yeah, yes. Back there. Yeah. Hey, it's better off, better off than that. Uh, my friend Nick here is extremely gay for you. <laughs> uh, Nick, is it Nick? Yes. <laughs> Stand up, Nick. <laughs> Are you gay, first of all? No. <laughs> Have I turned you gay? <laughs> Almost. Almost. <laughs> I'm going to take and push you over the edge. Several minutes working at it. <laughs> How did you put this all together? Um, I've actually had this costume for a few years and worn it to many cons, but yeah, I bought. And you probably have uh, have not watched it, have you? No, I have watched it. I had to smell all kinds of pretty things. <laughs> all kinds of pretty. <laughs> um, okay, and so you got the torn shirt thing. And the high heels. Ash never really had the high heels. <laughs> nice, nice. And uh, how much would you say you spent on this? Um, these shorts are actually designer, so I would say oh. yeah, I think, uh, probably like around seventy-five dollars. Yeah. Um, you didn't waste your money at all. <laughs> uh, and for that, I'm going to subsidize your costume. <laughs> all your good hard work, one dollar. Thank you. Shettas out there? Oh, I see. You're wearing a you're wearing a, a chainsaw dress. Well, let's at least bottle it for folks so they can see what's out there on the market. What's your name? Uh, my name is Suze. Hi, Suze. Come on over here. And, and what is what is this? Because you thought it was poorly made. <laughs> not at all. It just, it just, I, I thought I could do it. I have three ash costumes. Did, did, did you pay for that? Yes. How much did you pay? $120. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, a bargain at twice the price. A uh, will suffice. Uh, that's a pretty expensive lady, let me tell you. But wait, isn't there a pocket? Like turn sideways to get the full effect. So you got the chainsaw hand. See, she's styling it. She's scary all at the same time. Why? Why? 
give you a little hug, Ash. Uh, hey, lady! All right. You want to thank us for having 100% CGI free. Don't confuse that with visual effects. Well, the makeup is makeup. Is. Makeup is makeup. There's mostly that. But we've taken images and composited sometimes. But no, there's no, there's no official CGI swirly whirly ghosty scary creatures. It will not look generic. No, it'll freak your shit basically. <laughs> Make a movie is it asking too much to not see the green garden hose you and the big blood like the first one everyone thinks it's so charming oh what about the charm of the first one it wasn't charming it was low budget <laughs> can we change it no it didn't have any money now we're changing it 34 years later yes um, well what what made you and sam brandon a want to remake it to begin with what made me and Sam Raimi want to remake it in the first place? Yes. Because we've been tormented by fans for 15, 20 years. When are you going to make another one? When are you going to make another one? Sam's making the biggest movies in Hollywood. I've been stuck on this TV show seven seasons now. Not enough for this guy here. So when the hell would we cram that in between Spider-Man and Oz the Great Power? You know, that's how it sometimes. So a filmmaker made a, a short called Panic Attack which is available on YouTube, and the guy put it up there, he's from Uruguay, Fetty Alvarez. And this thing went insane, and within two weeks he was meeting with every big shot in Hollywood, including Sam Raimi. And he was a big Evil Dead fan, and Sam was talking to him about maybe making that short film into a feature version. But they started talking about Evil Dead, and he pitched some ideas, and so we started to pay attention. We thought, well, let's put an Evil Dead movie out that won't affect any of the other, the other Evil Dead movies. So, I envisioned two parallel sets of movies. Nothing's happening with the original set. People think we're burning the negative of the original Evil Dead. <laughs> Nothing's happening. Your, your three Evil Dead movies will be preserved as long as we can afford to preserve them. Like another hour or two. <laughs> but the new movies will function independently. I think when you see it, you realize, oh, oh, there's no Ash character. Woo! That's my feeling exactly. <laughs> so then that's because Sam still to this day wants to make another original Evil Dead movie in that series. So we thought, let's put this out for you savages to whet your appetite. And uh, I think Fetty Alvarez did a really good job because, look, you know, we, we take this very seriously about making sure that this movie doesn't stink to high heaven because this is what got us into the film business. You know, we, so. We picked what we think is the filmmaker is really good. We gave him a budget. We gave him a great New Zealand crew to shoot it. And actors that can actually, you know, act. <laughs> and special effects that are special. <laughs> Not defects. So, anyway, hopefully you'll enjoy that April 5th coming soon. Way the back. Yeah, we're here. Yeah. You are just a huge hero line. And I just, I think I speak for everybody in this room. Just thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Beijing, China. I had to translate it into Mandarin. 
went to a nightclub, used it on a chick, got laid. <laughs> so the of Sugar Baby in China is very powerful. These, these come out of Sam Raimi's uh, fevered brain, most of them, uh, while the camera's rolling. He will normally he'll throw out half my dialogue while the camera's rolling, because he just made it up. I'll try that sometime. Here, come on up here. Come on up here, actually. Come on up. I'm going to show you how, what it's like to act in a Sam Raimi movie. All right, what's your name? Ryan. Ryan, okay. Uh, Ryan, uh, now I'm going to do this. I'm going to throw you some. Here, hold this. Here's your mic. So, hold it up here, Bob. It's your ass. How does Ash come? Groovy. <laughs> How you doing, baby? Camera's rolling. You ready? Alright, here's your first feature I'm going to give you. Camera's rolling. Pay attention. You're the hero. Alright, Spinner Chin, listen up. Say it, say it. Alright, Spinner Chin, listen up. You listen up, Spinner Chin. I'm tired of your blah, 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 doing your bullshit. Listen up, Spinner Chin. I'm tired of your blah, 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 bullshit. Please do, Spinner Chin. That's not your best life, dude. Please, Spinner Chin. Suck, get out of here. Coming up, uh, that's Brian Swine right there. I got to go see a uh, preview of Evil Dead Remake. You saw a preview? You, you, saw, you saw the actual movie? Yes, yes. Okay. At, at, at State this week. It was All great. Right. Everybody, you're going to love it. My question to you, you mentioned remakes earlier. Your roots are an independent filmmaker. Yes. Evil Dead was an independent filmmaker. Yes, Evil Dead was an independent, very independent. What we have today... Too damn independent. <laughs> Hollywood is making everything a remake. We have independent filmmakers that are thinking they need to attach their name to remakes to get known. Do you think it is important for independent filmmakers to make original works so that we have an Evil Dead in 20 years? Are you lecturing me, sir? <laughs> monster movies have been made before Evil Dead. Night of the Living Dead. Night of a Thousand Corpses. I mean, on and on and on. It's not, it's not the first monster movie that's ever been made. We did, that's very successful. So we go, you know what? We're not going to make a, a horror film anymore. We're going to make a musical comedy called Crime Way. You don't even know what to react. It's not that you've even seen the movie. You just bought it today. Did you spend $125 on that too? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that movie bombed. So guess what we did? We made another horror film. Oh my god. It's kind of crazy how that works. So you have to do what you do to survive in the world. I think, yeah, we're getting a little sequel crazy. We're getting a little remake crazy. I don't call this anything. I call it another Evil Dead movie. It's not a remake or a sequel. It's nothing. It's just another damn Evil Dead movie. But look, people got to... They gotta get money however they can. I, I encourage people, if you're from North Carolina, make a movie in North Carolina and stay in North Carolina. There's nothing wrong with North Carolina. It's mine. Because look, in the old days, in the old days you had to take a physical negative. You had to buy from Kodak. Negative to thread through a camera that went through it would rip and tear and get exposed to the light. It was ridiculous. It would scratch and get hairs all over it. Then you had to take it to a laboratory and get it processed. Then you had to print, you had to, print, you had to develop the negative, then you had to get a print. And then you put it in this green machine that you had to thread all the way through, called the moviola. You turn it on, it's hot, it's spewing oil, and it rips the film in a thousand pieces. So you go back, you take it out, you put it on a machine, where you're putting physical splices to put the whole thing back together again. The drudgery of what filmmaking used to be is ridiculous, which I'm glad we did it because it meant we really wanted to do it. The problem with filmmakers today is they're lazy sons of bitches because they go like this. Should I edit on Saturday or Sunday? <laughs> we had to edit every single day because we had to take that thing back to where we were renting it from by Monday morning. So we were up all Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all night and taking it back Monday. So it's a little easier now. You can now go to Kmart, get an HD camera for what, $500? Buy a tower with 47 gigabytes of information. 
beautiful screen monitor, you know, for another couple thousand, for $5,000, you're completely set up with everything that you own. You can have digital software, you can make titles, digital music. We, had to, we still had to patch in a record and put it, you could hear the onto the song. Let's make all that noise because Sam didn't clean the record well enough. Patching it into a quarter inch machine and then patching that into a Super 8 projector. The word is nightmare, sir. Nightmare. <laughs> Where do we show that? We take a Super 8 movie and project it in the theater from all the way in the back there to the screen here. You know what it looks like? You can't see shit. It looks terrible. <laughs> There's all this hum on the track of it because it's not digital. Oh my god, it's digital now. So you can now take that. You go take your HD camera, make your movie. It's going to look pretty darn good, even if you stink as a photographer. You go back and you can sit for nothing and edit for a year. Nothing. Eat lollipops and you know donuts and just edit, edit, edit. It doesn't cost you anything. Put your titles on there and learn how to do it. You can then take it, put it on a thumb drive or a, a DVD, and march down to your local theater. You know, carrying those film prints around. It used to be five. Five reels that were this big around, and throw your back out carrying those things around. They didn't have to get it, and then the guy would have to put it up on a machine and rip it and carry it. He's smoking cigarettes, he puts a cigarette out on the thing, you know. It's ridiculous. So that's what I recommend to you. Just tell, a, tell stories where you are, because we don't need to see the same piece of California going by again. It's from 1977. <laughs> that's what Elvis wore, because they couldn't clean these things because you couldn't put them in the washing machine because of all the sequins. You had to just steam them and get away. <laughs> so his orgasmic moment was smelling fruit from 1977, knowing that that was Elvis's sweat slash fruit mixing with his sweat in that suit. It's the most disgusting thing I've ever heard. But the guy gave up on me. He goes, "Just forget it, man. You're never gonna get it." Yeah. yeah so screw him. So. Uh, yes. Uh, Yes, squeaky woman. Yes. <laughs> when, um, were in when I was in Gay, Michigan. Are you with that guy back there? <laughs> Gay, Michigan. Yes, it's northern Michigan. The upper peninsula of Michigan. Your husband and I used to live up there. What do you do up there? Michigan Tech. Okay. Did I get to visit, visit any of the other mining ruins while I was up there? Is they're so popular? <laughs> it's probably not dangerous at all to walk around there. Oh, nothing has leached into the groundwater at all. There were a hundred years of copper mining up there on the edge of Lake Superior. Man, if you start growing a, a third arm, you'll know what's going on. No, I did not see any more. Mining ruins, for God's sake. Uh, potentially the last question coming up. From where? Who is reliable? Trust me. Yeah, over here. Hi. Hi. So, last year my husband and I were traveling um, around Michigan and we saw a ghost. You did what the day before you were married? We got to meet you the day before. You got to meet me the day before you were married. And you gave us wonderful marriage. So the marriage was kind of an anti climactic event. <laughs> I've enjoyed all of my marriages. <laughs> How does your wife deal with all of us? How does my wife deal with all of you savages out there? Well, she's very happy that uh, usually it's uh, guys who are 24 years old want to go smoke a joint. They don't know. There's no hotel room keys being thrown up here and no, no panties. Because until about five years ago, this would have been all guys in black t-shirts. <laughs> You have fun on your tours, Bruce. <laughs> so it's a different kind of a threat, actually. It's just as dangerous, of course. But uh, uh, she's fine. Now you're about. You are married. We are. We got you are. How long have you been married? Uh, almost a year. Almost a year. And how's it going so far? Thumbs up. All right. You told us. You liar. <laughs> <laughs> You're stating that incorrectly. My advice was role play. I said don't role play. Your original advice was you be you, you be you, nobody's changing. Just stay yourself. 
And then you stopped, and you turned around, and you said, oh, yeah, and you role play. <laughs> no. I said, don't role play. I'm amending you that in front of all these people. The night to the end. All right, well, folks, we're going to get you on to talk to some other valuable guests here this evening. Well, I thank you all for coming out tonight.